Guys, so this is the first time I'm doing this with uh, both on this new page that I just created, which is a research page where I'm going to be presenting papers, interesting stuff. It's a different page from my other medical page where I present surgeries and maybe questions and answers. And by the way, you should feel free to ask questions or message me at any time. But the goal of this uh, presentation is to... Um, go over papers in a more scientific way and hopefully this may be helpful. Um, so um, this is the first time I'm actually using screen recording with the iPad, which is a new function in the iOS 11 system on, on the iPad, which I think is pretty exciting and it works really well, I hope. So let's see how this goes. So this paper I'm looking at is a paper from the Journal of Fertility and Sterility and um, which is not just about fertility and sterility, it's also about other things. And in this specific article, Dr. Casper, who is a well-known uh, researcher in, from Canada on endometriosis, uh, talks about oral contraceptives. And I think it's a very important topic because pretty much every single woman I have seen with endometriosis has been on some form of oral, oral contraceptives. And uh, the title is focused about um, first line of treatment, which obviously um, we do not agree that the first line of treatment of endometriosis should always be birth control pills. Uh, sometimes the first line of treatment should be surgery. It depends on a case-by-case -case basis. So I can't just say that, agree that every patient with endometriosis should be on oral contraceptives first to see what happens. So I may disagree with that, but let's see what uh, Dr. Casper has to say, and um, he's making some important points. Uh, uh, the first point that he's making is that um, he, he questions the fact that um, um, regular oral contraceptives, which are composed of estrogen and progesterone, should be uh, given to patients of endometriosis. Rather, he recommends that uh, patients should be on progestins only, okay? And um, the reason why he's su su suggesting that is that, um, um, that, that, is that we'll see further in the article, but he believes that es the estrogen part of contraceptive has a problem. Uh, he does acknowledge, though, uh, in this part here, that the actual recommendation, the standard recommendation, is that the first line of treatment uh, should be estrogen and progesterone. Um, but, you know, as you know, sometimes we do disagree with what some of the literature says because patients experience different things. Uh, and we know, uh, especially from um, listening to stories and what people actually go through, that sometimes the recommendations of the academia are, go against the reality of the experience of endometriosis. Um, in any case, uh, the reason why oral contraceptives uh, have been using endometriosis is because they reduce bleeding and um, in patients without endometriosis. So because there's a thinking that um, endometriosis implant are similar to regular endometrium, which is also not true, there's an assumption that all contraceptives will have the same effect on endometriosis that they have on the endometrium. Now, we know that's not true because we know that endometriosis implants are different than um, uh, the, the normal endometrium, okay? Um, and he has a very good point, okay? Um, interestingly enough, the doctor points out, Dr. Casper points out, that, that only one randomized trial has been ever, ever published uh, to look into the effectiveness of oral contraceptive for pelvic pain. And in this study, 100 women were randomized between oral contraceptives or placebo. And a placebo is something that you give. It's like a sugar pill, basically. And when you look at this study, it was only a three-cycle study. And it's, it's over here, in this image over here. You can see that uh, after three months, the women who took... And these are only 100 women, and they were randomly distributed into these two groups. Uh, the women with, um, um, who took oral contraceptives uh, got better, and it's the red line, the one down here, okay, got better, did better over time than um, 
before treatment than after treatment. And the women with placebo got a little bit better, but not as much. So um, in that one study, on it shows that at least um, in women with pelvic pain and desmenorrhea, there is an increase in an improvement of the pain. Um, the reality of that study, though, is most of the improvement came from, at least this is what the Casper thinks, and I, I agree with that, the speculation, is that most of the, of this, of the improvement came from the reduction on the menstrual cramps, okay, as opposed to any benefit on non-menstrual pelvic pain, okay? Um, there are other studies looking at birth controls and pills and endometriosis, and um, what's interesting about these studies is they show that about half of patients have no improvement, partial no improvement of symptoms, okay? And, and I see this every day, okay? And there's, there's another important study which was done in Canada where they looked at uh, use of oral contraceptive by patients diagnosed with endometriosis, and it showed that about 70% of women had used multiple pills, and 40% had been prescribed between 3 and 10 different oral contraceptives for the endometriosis, okay? Crazy stuff, okay, crazy stuff. So we do know that some people may benefit, but not everybody. And I think that's what Dr. Casper's point is, okay? And um, so we do know that oral contraceptives are not completely effective, okay, in the treatment of pain, the management of pain, and choices. Obviously, it's not a cure by any means. We're just talking about managing some of the pain, okay? Um, and the point that Dr. Casper is making is that all contraceptives, okay, even the lowest level, have a very high, high dose of estrogen, okay? And in, because of the special behavior of endometriotic implants, which are different from endometrium, there is a risk of com with combination of estrogen and progesterone that you could, there's a con counterproductive problem which results in estrogen dominance in the presence of progesterone resistance. So you're blocking the, eff the efficacy of the progesterone and you are stimulating the, with uh, estrogen. So it's like a double whammy, okay? And um, there are studies looking at endometriosis and the epidemiology of endometriosis and taking birth control pills, but I'm really not gonna go into that because I think those studies are really not good, okay? Um, but, um, um, what I would just say is that we don't really know uh, if endometriosis past use increases the risk of endometriosis, okay? Uh, so we don't know if birth control pills past use increases the risk of endometriosis. Um, but what Dr. Casper is suggesting is that it is probably more logical, and, and um, biologically speaking, that uh, to uh, replace oral contraceptives as a first line, and probably also as a post-surgical approach uh, of endometriosis with oral progesterone only medications, okay? Um, such as norethindrosterone acetate, which is a gestin, okay? Or dianogest, which is the progestin which is inside Vizan, okay? Um, uh, the, the important part, and I think it's very important, and I'll mention this really quickly, but one of the reasons why doctors give oral contraceptives after surgery, especially after endometrioma surgery, is that they don't want the patients to ovulate because there is a worry that ovulation can open the door to residual endometriosis to enter back into the ovary and, uh, and invade the ovary and create another endometrioma. That's why sometimes doctors give birth control pills for a few months after endometriosis for the purpose of healing, okay? But, and really, the most important part is ovulation inhibition. And, um, and here you could see that uh, progesterones also inhibit ovulation, which I think is important to know, okay? And uh, so um, his recommendation is to, instead of OCPs, of oral contraceptives, go with pure progestins and norethindr norethindrone acetate or agestin has been approved, it's approved, 
for the use in endometriosis by the FDA at a dosage of 2.5 to 5 daily. Some people have gone up. And, um, and Dianogest, which is very popular, and everybody's talking about Vizan, Vizan, Vizan. I think it's a marketing thing. I mean, Dianogest may have slightly less side effects, but in reality, Agestin and Dianogest, which is Vizan, are very, very, very similar effects, okay? So um, I wouldn't just shell out more money for, for Dianogest or Vizan as opposed to other pills that contain norethindrone, you know, uh, um, that contain uh, norethindrone acetate, okay? So, um, so that we agree on that, because a lot of patients ask me about Vizan and how expensive it is, okay? Because they are equally effective, okay? They're equally effective. Um, so, um, I think that um, to conclude this, um, I'd like to say a couple of things. Uh, and uh, the first thing is that, number one, um, I see many patients with endometriosis who are on birth control pills and they have an enormous amount of side effects and very little benefit, okay? They bleed, they have all sorts of side effects, they change tons of birth control pills, so it's likely that um, it's very much of a hit or miss type thing. So um, if you're not doing well on the birth control pills, most likely switching to a different pill is not going to help that much. It's worth trying, but be ready to give that up, okay? And um, the other alternative is considered just a progesterone only, which may or may not help, but at least you may not have some of the side effects. Um, if you have questions, please comment. Please comment under, right under here, okay? Write comment, write your comments, and, and send messages, okay? Send me messages if you have questions, and we'll publish them. Uh, and um, again, Dr. Vidali, I hope this works. So we're going to give it a try. I hope this was interesting enough. Of course, I'm just reviewing a paper and it's just a starting point for discussions. And we'll take it from there. Again, endometriosis is real. Check out my other page uh, where you'll see more information.